Hello, Sippers. I'm Martia. I'm Demetrius. And I'm Renee. And welcome to this week's episode of Sip and Unwind True Crime Podcast. Hey, ladies. Hey, Sippers. Hey, girls. Hey, ladies. What's poppin'? Hey, What's poppin'? Hey. How are y'all doing? I'm good. Oh, wonderful. I'm about to go on a vacation. I'm happy. Oh, exciting. <laughs> we have to talk offline about all the details. Yes. I need yes. all the details. And yes. there'll be some pictures online, maybe sippers. We'll see. We'll okay. Oh. Can't wait. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get it started, ladies. So I'm sippers, ready. if you didn't already know, although we are a true crime podcast, we also discuss many other topics. So please make sure you keep listening after our case discussion because we have a few other segments you don't want to miss. Now, before I begin speaking on this case, I do want to acknowledge the people that these crimes have left a lasting impact on. I want to send my heartfelt sympathy to not only the survivors, but also the loved ones and friends of all the victims we are about to discuss. Okay, ladies, so yes. let me tell the sippers what we're sipping on for this episode. Ooh, yeah, The Grapefruit Spritzer is our cocktail of choice for tonight. And real quick on the ingredients, it has grapefruit juice, vermouth simple syrup and prosecco and it's so refreshing so you can find the recipe details posted on our ig facebook and twitter pages today's case takes us back to the year 1998 and takes us over to colleen texas I'm going to discuss the case of Christopher Black Sr. The victims in this case are his 36-year-old estranged wife, Gwendolyn Black, his five-month-old daughter, Christina Maria, and his 17-month-old step-granddaughter, Catrice Houston. Now, let's get into this case. Gwendolyn and Christopher Black were only married for about three years. Gwendolyn worked as an elementary school teacher in the town of Coparis Cove, Texas. While Christopher was working a security job, out of state. Gwendolyn decided to stay behind in Texas and take care of the children. But eventually, Gwendolyn filed for divorce because she said that Christopher was a little help while he was living out in a whole other state working his job. Both of them served time in the army and that's where they met. And ironically, it is said that Christopher had a very distinguished military record and no prior history of criminal activity. A psychiatrist would later testify during his trial that Christopher's violent, destructive episode was the result of him being in distress over his marital problems. When Christopher found out that Gwendolyn had filed for divorce, he got very upset. And from the time he found out, he started plotting the murder of his family. In February 1998, Christopher recorded several cassette tapes. Do y'all remember cassette tapes? Oh, I I have some. some. I still have some. (laughs) What? Okay. Wow. So the reason why I asked if you all had, you know, remembered cassette tapes is because, like I stated, Christopher recorded on several cassette tapes that he uh, was going to kill his wife and anyone else that was in the house with her he mailed Uh, those cassette tapes out to several family members and he made sure that the tapes were set to arrive after the shooting at the time christopher recorded those tapes he had also put in an application to obtain a handgun and after finding out that his background check came back clean he purchased a nine millimeter semi-automatic pistol the day before the killings but yeah, he he actually he planned this out as soon as he found out his wife was getting ready well, to legally got divorce it. him. Yes, mm-hmm. because as I stated earlier, they said his record in the military was clean. He didn't have any type of criminal history. Wow. Um, so yeah, he was able to get a clean background check, purchase a gun. Mm-hmm. And the next day on February 7th, 1998, the day after he purchased his handgun, mm-hmm. Christopher went to the home of his estranged wife, Gwendolyn Black who was living in Colleen, Texas at the time. As soon as he entered the home, he began shooting. Oh my gosh. Now, Gwendolyn had company that day, a woman named Deidre Blackburn. She was a friend visiting Gwendolyn. And fortunately, she was able to run out of the house and she did escape unharmed not long after the shooting began. In this case, she actually did witness Gwendolyn getting killed, unfortunately, Mm. but she was able to run out of the house. So Gwendolyn would not be so fortunate. Christopher shot his estranged wife a total of at least 10 to 12 times. Wow. He he then turned the gun on his 19-month-old stepdaughter, Catrice Houston, and he shot her five times in the chest as she sat in her high chair. And they suspect she was eating some snacks at the time. And the it's all heartbreaking, but this was really mm. a hard thing where he also fired one round into his five-month-old infant daughter, 
Christina Maria. And I'm going to assume that with him being named Christopher and her being named mm-hmm. Christina, she was named after him. Yeah. It's like, wow, wow. how do you turn around and actually take the Five life yeah. of any child, right. any person, but your own flesh or blood? That, you're right. And so violently. Goodness. All three victims died from their injuries. And immediately after the shooting, Christopher made a call to 911 and told the dispatcher that he had just killed his wife, daughter, and, and, and step-granddaughter, while also telling the dispatcher, quote, I ran out of bullets. Christopher was arrested at the scene and would later be sentenced to death in the state of Texas for all three murders. Now, to go back a little bit, when the police arrived to the horrific crime scene, Mm -hmm. Christopher was unarmed and he was cradling Christina's lifeless body and holding her to his chest. The nerve. Catrice was slumped over in her high chair. And when police approached Christopher, he said to them that he didn't want to put his baby down on the cold ground. One of the officers to arrive on the scene, his name was Officer Bradley. He recalled that as he went over to take the baby from Christopher, it was at that moment when he realized that the baby was deceased. The officer recalled that baby Christina was not breathing. She had no pulse and her eyes were open but fixed. He said that before Christopher handed the baby over, he said to the officer, quote, I want to kiss my baby. And Officer Bradley allowed him to do so. Oh, did, did that he, officer wow. know that he did that to that baby? He did because and he actually lo- he actually told the dispatcher. So they knew from the dispatch yeah. call that no, this you man- No, don't get to do none of that. Ooh. Exactly. And just to go back to the fact that he told the dispatcher he ran out of bullets, he was actually planning on turning the gun on himself. But because he had shot so many rounds into the victims, mm. he ran out of bullets for that reason. And he was not able to turn the gun on himself. So this, this was a planned murder-suicide, mm. Mm. which would explain why he also sent those tapes out mm. to family members. Because it was supposed to be he, he was supposed to be gone. I mean, the crime. He this was really then, premeditated. I mean, to the, to the 10th power. Exactly. And even though the, the case was presented before a, a jury and... There were some people that spoke about their case. Like I mentioned, the psychiatrist earlier, Christopher was charged, but he was never actually tried in the slayings of his wife and and daughter. But at some point before he was convicted, he would actually claim that he shot and killed his estranged wife because she tormented and belittled him. And she also was physically abusing his then 10 year old son. But of course, no evidence was ever found to corroborate his accusations. So as I stated, the crime happened in February. In August of 1998, a jury convicted Christopher of the capital murder of the step-granddaughter, Catrice Houston, and sentenced him to death. At the time of this crime in Texas, if you commit a murder against a child under a certain age, there was a possibility of an automatic death sentence. And wow. that has everything to do with why he was never tried in the slayings of his wife and daughter. Okay. So it's like, if you if you get sentenced to death for one murder, then it's like, you, you killed all three of them. They knew that. There was no denying right. it. Even though he actually pled not guilty, mm. there was evidence showing that he did it. And it didn't matter uh, anyway since he already got the death penalty. Exactly. Of time and money. I just never get it how they go, oh, not guilty. Yeah, um, I, I don't yeah. I don't get it. But it only took 15 minutes for the jury to deliberate and decide Christopher's fate. So the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, they affirmed the conviction and the sentence in September 2000. And he had the nerve to, you know, come back and try to appeal his his sentencing, but they denied all of the requests and they blocked him from being able to make any more appeals. That is the shortest deliberation I've heard in the cases mm-hmm. that we've spoke about. Thus Same far. here. 15 minutes. And that 15, 15 minutes, minutes, if I can just make up a scenario in my head, it probably took them probably seven minutes to walk to the room and mm-hmm. then sit down, get, get back up in seven minutes mm-hmm. to come back to the jury, back to the court. Mm-hmm. Room. I mean, like he, we he made our decision. He told on himself. He sent out those tapes. The late, you know, the exactly. friend saw him come in the house. All right. of that premeditated, right? Exactly. And how scary had that have that you know must have been for her friend because the plan was to not just commit a murder suicide, but he said he wanted to kill everybody in the house with his wife. Oh so God. whoever was there hmm. was his intended yeah, target. At least let her leave. Wow. But so I'm glad she was able. Wow, to Wow, that is yes. just. I have never heard of this case. This is something, wow. 
very yeah, interesting so, very interesting yeah and, and tragic christopher black was put to death by lethal injection on july 9th 2003 and he did not make a final statement amongst the family members and friends who were present gwendolyn's sister margulis hawthorne and i do apologize if i pronounced that first name wrong but she was there to witness her ex-brother-in-law be put to death oh man so she represented for the family basically yes and like i said other family members were there and other okay. friends of the victim and also his friends um, okay. were also there. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, several people. But can y'all believe that during his stay on death row, he was on a like an inmate pen pal site oh my goodness, looking please, for please. love. Records show that he wrote on that site that he didn't want romance or money. What? And the only thing that he wanted was a friend. And he also was saying that he made some bad choices that landed him in prison and that his days are long and sad. So he was looking for some companionship. Okay, so the audacity. And that's the same thing I said. And the the website was specifically for inmates. So anyone who was on there perusing the site knew that they were on there to Mm. get chosen or picked (laughs) by a inmate. So wow, that little tidbit, no, it irritated my soul because y'all know I do not have sympathy for inmates who are in prison unless they were wrongly convicted right a weed seller that got 75 years those are the people that i have sympathy for but right. someone like him is kind of like no you you should not have access to the internet number one number and one even though that was back in the late 90s early 2000s but still you should not have had no technology no access to it back then in my opinion that's crazy that they actually have access to the internet and have these websites up where they right. out crap and and then his last meal, which, I mean, I don't even know why that's a thing to ask prisoners what they want oh, for yeah, their last meal, good, but yeah. he had like steak and potatoes for his last meal, but he did not give a statement, which I, I kind of, I feel so bad for the family because I know that doesn't bring back the victims. It probably won't make the family feel any better, but I'd be wanting some of these killers to actually apologize for their crimes. Like, like I said, it probably won't even change the thing in the person's mind who is missing their, their family members, but he just went out silent. He, he didn't even say anything. Yeah. Like you, you want to hear like some kind of glimmer of remorse. Like, did you exactly. even have remorse, right. especially when children are involved? It's like, exactly. is there any, right. like a little bit of glimpse of remorse for what right. you did? And I couldn't find information detailing what was on those tapes it just was several articles just talking about the subject of the tapes all right but real quick i do want to note that my sources for this particular case were temple daily telegram news murderpedia y'all know that's probably gonna be my thing every episode okay the Um, (laughs) go-to right justia u.s law and a website called myplainview.com so okay ladies and sippers i think it's time to close the book on the christopher black case what do you yes. ladies think let's let's shut Please. that immediately <laughs> yeah Oof. all right so moving on to our next segment I want to revisit a missing persons case that I covered back in November 2021 on episode number 26. It was the missing persons case of Brittany Palmer. And I shared an update about her case in February on our Instagram and Facebook pages. But I just want to make sure I share it again on the actual podcast, just in case it may have gotten overlooked. All right. So Brittany Palmer was reported missing from Jacksonville, Florida on August 23rd, 2020. And according to CBS 47 Fox 30 News, Brittany's body was found in a local abandoned cemetery on October 8th, 2020. Her remains were not identified until February 14th, 2022. So that's almost 18 months later. The only items they found near Brittany's remains was a sock, a hair bow, no clothes or shoes. And at the time that her body was found, no autopsy was done. So that's the update. They, they actually found this young woman's body not long after she disappeared, actually. But unfortunately, because her case hasn't been handled right, there was no autopsy done. I'm not sure what happened with the evidence they did have as far as the hair bow, the clothes, no clothes or shoes, but there was a sock there. I don't know if they were able to test it for DNA or whatever. Uh, that is just so sad um, when you hear that. No autopsy, exactly. no closure right. for the family. And while the family is hoping that their loved one comes home alive, here she has been deceased again for almost 18 months after she disappeared. Um, on the story, of course, her mother is 
understandably distraught and has a lot of questions for investigators, such as how did Brittany die? How did her body get into that abandoned cemetery? And why did it take so long for investigators to identify her? Now, this is the part that kind of made me give the story a side eye because the medical examiner said that there is no foul play suspected, but the family at that time was still awaiting autopsy results, which we know can take several weeks. So this is probably one of those stories that I'm definitely going to come back and update again and maybe even again after that. But the case is not being handled as a homicide so far. And and it's still a case that even if they were to close it, the family still wants answers. So if anyone out there is listening and you have any information about the Brittany Palmer case, please contact the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office at 904-630-0500. And of course, our hearts go out to the family of Brittany Palmer, and I hope that her family receives the answers that they're looking for. Right. I do too, because that is heartbreaking. It really is. So, all right, ladies. Next up, I do have another case that I wanted to shed some light on for our unusual and unsolved segment. And actually, this particular story can be one segment or another because it's also a missing persons case. So I'm not sure if you ladies have heard of the name Alexis Ware. Alexis Ware is a 29-year-old mother of two who was last seen on January 30th, 2022 at a 7-Eleven gas station in Anderson, South Carolina. It's a lengthy article, but I really want to read this article from NBC News. Initially, I kind of had a suspect in my head, but then there's been so many twists and turns since uh, Miss Alexis Ware has gone missing that it, it truly is a mystery of what may have happened to her. So it's been just over a month since Alexis Ware was last seen in South Carolina. And again, this article was dated February 28th. So we're at this point going on two months. But at the time of this article, her family definitely were saying that it's very unusual for the 29-year-old mother of two to be out of touch with the family or her children for that long. She's got a lot of people concerned about her from her mother her stepfather, uh, her children, and she the two fathers for those kids, everyone is concerned about her. They say she always had her kids with her. She was always calling her mother and checking in. Even Alexis's younger half-brother chimed in and said that he is super worried because she's always been supportive and kind, and she's the type of person that wants to help everyone. She was actually a hairstylist by trade, and she also dabbled in fashion and makeup, and she was a pretty well-known person in her town. And she also had several appointments set up to do some photo shoots because she was starting to get into the Instagram modeling field. But unfortunately, before she could make it to some of those appointments, she disappeared. During that last weekend in January, Alexis had been hanging out with her family all weekend long. But they said that it wasn't the Alexis that they were used to. And the family members felt like something was going on with her because she was kind of freaking out a little bit, according to this article. During the family weekend, her mother said that she was crying about her upcoming 30th birthday. Day. She told people that she didn't think she was going to make it to her birthday, which the family thought that was unusual because they, they didn't understand why she was talking about not making it to her birthday. Um, when usually in the past, they said Alexis would normally go all out for her birthday. They also said that the Saturday night before Alexis went missing, she had talked about being followed. She was crying about someone chasing her down, but she never said who she thought it might have been. And on January 30th is when she basically vanished uh, without a trace. She left around noon on Sunday and she did do a video chat around three o'clock. So her mother was able to see that she was laying in bed during the video chat. So she left her mother's house. She went home, was laying in bed. And then around 7.30 p.m., she went to go meet the father of her youngest child. And he met her. When he got his child, She Alexis asked him to take her oldest child as well. And that father agreed to do so. Um, now, the, the kid's father, he said that when he left Alexis, they went their separate ways. And he kept going over to his family's house. And it was after that encounter that no one has heard from her since. So basically, the last known sighting for Alexis Ware was at the 7-Eleven gas station in Anderson, South Carolina on January 30th, 2022. 
So by Monday, when they didn't hear from Alexis, people were starting to get worried. And by February 1st, that Tuesday, they went ahead and filed a missing persons report. And they reviewed the 7-Eleven footage so far, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Nothing looked suspicious. Alexis's stepfather told Dateline NBC that the father of Alexis's youngest child, he went home from the gas station and he went to work the next day. And so far, his alibi has checked out. So they have no suspects for this case so far. Now, a few days later, they did find Alexis's red Honda Accord. It was found in a town called McCormick, South Carolina, which is about 30 miles south of Anderson. And all of her belongings were left in that vehicle. Her cell phone, her daughter's cell phone, her purse, her ID. And there was also a bag with her clothes found in the trunk. Alexis's mother and stepfather, they think it's odd that she would have been in that area since she lives in a town called Greenville. And again, those towns are like 30 minutes apart. I mean, 30 miles apart. So people haven't been able to connect the dots on why she would have been in the area where her car was found. Throughout the past few weeks, they have been searching for Alexis Ware, but there has been no sign of her. To update even more so on this case, but I came across a video posted by a YouTuber. The name is 54 underscore keys. I've seen a few stories on this channel and they, they always post great content. They actually put together clips of both of the kids' fathers talking about their last conversations with Alexis. Oh, the plot thickens right Right, there. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, and they were both saying that Alexis kind of gave them the vibes that maybe she was having some type of psychotic meltdown because she was very paranoid. She was warning them that I've had some exes pass away. I feel like I might be cursed or something. You might be next. She just kept telling people to be careful. The article even mentions how she thought someone was following her. But get this, the video that I watched also shows Alexis on a ring footage camera where she went to her neighbor's house and she knocked on the neighbor's door. The neighbor didn't open the door, but she was just like, okay, who is this? The young woman says, I'm your neighbor, Alexis. And she mentioned something about she does root work. Now you ladies know what root work is, right? Like somebody oh, yeah. put a root on you? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So like she, well, <laughs> that's not how I say it, but yes. <laughs> yes. I think that's how they be saying they put somebody right. put a root on you. Why she led with that and, and told the neighbor that is still a mystery. But when that video surfaced of that ring camera footage, it added to the fact that something was definitely going on that was very unusual for Alexis. So now people have speculated that she get into some kind of spiritual something that she, you know how they say you're battling demons. Everybody's not going to understand that, but for those who get it, they get it. And so people have started saying that right. she was dipping and dabbling in some things that she probably shouldn't have been dipping and dabbling in. And that's what may have caused her to have these hallucinations and these paranoid ideations, et cetera, et cetera. Because the family and the, and the baby's fathers, they were all saying that she was very, very different the last few days before she went missing. So a very sad case, but also a very mysterious case. As I saw someone commenting and I agreed with it. The one thing that she did do which was so great in this case is that she gave her children over to someone that she trusted to keep yeah. them safe. I'm hoping that she comes home and she is okay and maybe she just needed a break. And Martia, wait, once again, did she not mm -hmm. have her cellular with her, her cell phone? When they found her car, they found right. all of her personal belongings, including her cell phone. So no, okay. she she does not have a phone on her. Oh, man. Um, her daughter's phone was also in the car, along with some other things, too. So yeah, that's what the article said. So it really is a heartbreaking case. And, uh, and we've covered, I, I believe it was you, Demetrius, who covered a case of a young woman who was at a police station, oh, um, went missing, mm -hmm. and she was found, and they suspected she may have had some type of bipolar yeah. or schizophrenic episode you remember I, the name? I, I cannot recall yeah, the recall name oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but this case kind of made me think about that and of the, course i am i'm sorry let me interject i think it was mm -hmm. the mytrice richardson was yes, it? yes was i believe so name. yes mm -hmm. so of course we are hoping and praying with the family that this case has a different outcome like i said initially i definitely was kind of giving the side eye to the baby's father that met her that night but but after i watched that video and i saw the baby's father's accounts of what they say happened and, and their, their conversations with her i said nah i felt bad for even considering uh one of those guys has i mean you do, do initially it. think those close mm -hmm. to the individual first yeah and then you mm -hmm. you know scavenging out you know to other suspects but 
Right. Yeah. And unfortunately, I mean, that's just the the statistics show that with all of these cases, no matter what uh, race of people it is usually the spouse or the partner or an ex who did it, you know, so them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So at any rate, ladies, I just wanted to make sure I I shed some kind of light on that case. Uh, As with all of our cases, I mean, we talk about these cases, but then also we have to remember that these are real stories, real people. And for the cases that are unsolved and unusual, such as this one, we want to make sure we get as many eyes and ears on these cases and help the families find their loved ones. So as I stated earlier, I just want to do a real quick recap Alexis D. Ware, she went missing on January 30th, 2022. She is 29 years old and from Anderson, South Carolina. She is a Black female, light complexion. Height is about five feet five. Weight is about 230 pounds. Dark hair, long hair, and brown eye color. I'll post as many details as I can on the Instagram page. Anyone that's interested in more information can also Google Alexis Ware's name and there'll be several articles that'll pop up for you. If anyone has any information, you sippers can call the Anderson County Sheriff's Office at 864-260-4405 to help bring Alexis Ware home safely. I would like to try to end this episode on a a lighter note, but I'm not too sure how much lighter it's going to (laughs) get once I tell y'all what I want to talk about. (laughs) But I do have a quick take another sip or maybe we could consider this one a a messy wind down. Okay. I want to talk about that slap her around the world at at the Oscars a few nights ago. (laughs) Because even though it was a few days ago now, the internet is still buzzing about Will Smith and Chris Rock. So I figured we might as well go ahead and put our two cents in on that as well. What is y'all's opinion on that whole debacle of a situation? I don't I don't <laughs> condone violence, but... Uh-oh, you said but. I, I did slightly approve of the slap. You approved of it. Oh, you did? Yeah, because... I, I, look, uh, I mean, like I think, court, on what grounds? I just you? think at some <laughs> point it got to be... I don't know. They claim that Chris Rock didn't know of her health condition. And I understand mm-hmm. you're a comedian first. Mm-hmm. That's your job. That's what you were hired to do. But I think it could have went... He could have chose something else to make fun of. Okay. Like, just pick something else. It, maybe that could have been his target still. Jada could have still been his target. Mm-hmm. But can you do something else like Mother Hen something or... I don't know. Mother Hen? <laughs> I was about I mean, to say the same thing, Mother to, Hen. <laughs> you know, why it had to be the hair thing? Because you associated her baldness <laughs> to the character in that movie, which my right. thing is... She did that as a way to represent, to look more masculine, to show the men, I can do exactly what you can do. Oh, So okay. maybe maybe they took some kind of offense to that title that and him saying that and was like, oh, why no. would you even compare my baldness to that? I'm not trying to look masculine. I'm going through a health crisis right now. You know, that's just my opinion and take mm-hmm. on it. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm going too deep on it. But, you know, you know, women, we, you know, sure. sisters. You know, we we love our as hair. Deep as the internet has gotten about this whole thing this week, <laughs> you, know, you are fine. Cool. You know, we love. You know, we love our hair. <laughs> right? They didn't analyze the. What the background this thing. was, what he was feeling in <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not like, trying to take it to that people. extent, but you know, us women, we protect our hair. Our hair means something to us at the end right. of the day. Mm-hmm. So by him attacking yeah. her with that, I was like, oh it was an attack i mean i think they got the beat. Tone of voice for let, me, let me tell you something i really believe in my heart of hearts and if they can invite me to the red table i would definitely go but i feel like will smith and chris rock already have beef prior to that because remember yeah, chris rock that. chris rock went off on them remember when they boycotted the smiths boycotted uh the oscars mm-hmm. some years back well he okay. made a lot of jokes about them then and i from my recollection they didn't approve of him doing that. They were like, hey, we didn't come because it's not enough of Black or African Americans. They're represented. And, you know, why would you talk about us, you know, boycotting? So I think they, it just spooled over. That's my opinion mm. on it. And I hadn't heard about that until recently because I, mm-hmm. I don't keep up with a lot of the entertainment news. Well, but unfortunately, I, when you're online, you might not keep up with it, but you're going right, to see it, you know. Right. So I heard about that recently. But I just 
kind of felt like there's got to be some kind of backstory I to think, this. I think it's but, a lot of backstory on that. And they just didn't approve of him attacking them. Like, why would you do that? Just because you're able to be there and it's not enough representation of African-Americans there. We're not getting rewards. Because that's what they were saying. Why aren't we nominated more? I promise I'm not trying to sound racist. But why is it more whites that are nominated for these accolades of best mm. actress, best actor, you know, top producers, top exec, you know, why do they get those awards? And when we have great people of color that can receive those same accolades as well. Mm. And I, okay. I, that's what I just feel like. I feel like he was, it just built up and he was like, okay, let's go for it. But I would really like to hear his side of the story on why he felt the need to get up and smack him. But, mm, right. What know. do you think about this whole thing, Renee? Do you have any opinion towards any of it? Not very strong. <laughs> like, I'm just like I don't you don't I don't know them people I don't know they might have had right. a conversation before and it might have been something he told him personally yeah to it could have been him. and it could have been something that was totally different that's I'm telling you it's gotta thinking. be it's so gotta be I was some like, kind I of care. story to like it. he hit him okay he apologized okay right I, okay <laughs> right like you know yeah. like I can't get into their head and what they thinking and right people, like there's so much other stuff that goes on that we just don't know you know, so exactly. like because you've seen something online doesn't mean like I don't you don't know. I don't know. It might have I don't know. So I, that's why I, I can't wait about that. <laughs> now they know. did I did read somewhere or either I heard it on a YouTube video that uh he was asked by certain NBC and I guess like certain outlets to do an mm -hmm. interview and he said no, he's gonna hold his conversation for the red table talk with Jada. So Who I would love that? to see they they're saying that's what Will told them. Oh, that's what Will said. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I would love to see that red table talk just to see, you know, why what pushed him to that level. Mm-hmm. And okay. then, you know, to hear Denzel telling him is it, well, that's what he said, accepting his award. And Denzel told him the devil come at you when you're at your highest point. So mm, at the point, you, I'm just like, why did you, you say know, that? Kind of give him grace. <laughs> I'm just thinking just because, I mean, his whole career, he has been towing the line and doing all this. This one time he went, stepped out of that. And it's just like, everybody's like, oh my God, he's a yeah. monster. And yeah, I'm just right. like, I've been oh, that's traumatized. Funny. I and I'm just heard. like, just get over it. I like, haven't even heard people talking like that. I kind of was thinking. Yeah. Said she was traumatized. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amy Schumer said she was traumatized. <laughs> yeah. Like, just get a life. Yeah, I mean, the only person I hit. saw, but at the end was, of the um, day, Tom Tom Hanks. I think I saw him make a comment about it, and he wasn't too pleased. Right. But anyway, I didn't see a whole bunch. And of at the there. end of the day, these people are all human. They just have a bigger paycheck. I was about to say they definitely have rich people problems because I was trying to wait on you guys to finish <laughs> before I gave my opinion. So <laughs> I'm gonna just go ahead and insert right here rich people problems and i saw somebody mention that and i was like that is so true because if one of us had been sitting in there just as a regular audience member we would have been, been kicked we, out we would not only that we wouldn't have been able to get on the stage that's a right <laughs> <laughs> and then he was able to draw his hand back which i thought was a punch initially but it was a slap well, and look at, then he what, was able to walk calmly and right. sit back down get in right. the board and make a speech and it's rich people over. problems. And then right. not only that, check it out. Went to an after party See. with the celebrities that sat. So, yeah, and that's why. The and then when I seen them at the after party, um, party and dancing, that's all just like. Child, I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't even know all yes. that. Yes, <laughs> but I See, said, we were still be in jail trying <laughs> right. to figure out who's gonna pay our bail to get us out. <laughs> right, four or five days later, he over there dancing, partying, and stuff. Child, <laughs> to his own music. <laughs> <laughs> So my yeah. thing is, I think it got to be a backstory. And mm -hmm. then again, what if it was just all acting, mm -hmm. just because something coming up like, big? Maybe, but then I'm like, no, but no, no. Because yeah. then I just read a, on Reddit. theories are definitely out there. There was uh, this guy posted on Reddit. He that was like, well, Chris Rock sales are about to go up for his comedy yeah, show. Have. You seen? <laughs> so like, I was like, wow. Hours. It was. It's like skyrocketed. Yeah, so you know we don't know, yeah. but I really all think these, it's a lot of pictures story. of them hanging out worse or <laughs> right. surfacing. But yeah, like at the end of the day, I guess it's kind of like how Renee was saying. I don't really care. No, but it's definitely was like group texts were going off about it. You know, so it's like even people that I know don't keep up with it. I had a friend that actually called me who was very upset, and I oh, was wow. like, like what? now. I didn't I didn't laugh. Upset. I will admit that I didn't laugh because I was just more like, wait a minute, what? Yes. But she was like angry about it all or whatever. Oh, it's um, a lot of people. But oh my I, God. <laughs> what'd you say, Renee? I said, Did she know that? <laughs> no, but it, it kind of gave me um I, Renee you know and how, Wendy vibes. 
<laughs> she, kinda, you know, oh, she was defending the them because I guess she's a fan. <laughs> How you were defending right. Wendy. Right. Like, like I mean, you said, they're going to be fine because rich people problems. Like we would, right. our stock would never go up with something like this, but their stock has gone up. Yeah. He's waiting to talk on the Red Table show. Chris Rock and is I bet ready you to go on book tour. Sales are about cetera, to go off the skyrocket. People mm-hmm. are like, I need to know about his past. They're probably going to go buy all his books now. It was on my list of, of books are, to buy say, anyway. It was selling good. It was but, number one. Wasn't oh, it's been mm-hmm. a skyrocket. You know, yeah. them sales are going to go up. I I was confused about how it all transpired, and I and I thought to myself, was her look on her but face her because look? the joke was bad, good, or was it because she probably was nervous about what else is he going to say? Because everybody's been joking about them for the past. Several Oh, yeah. So I kind of thought about that yeah. aspect of it too. But like, how do you go from laughing at this man's joke to walking because up on stage? And I him? mean, he was going with the punches, <laughs> and then he's seen, I guess, how it affected her or something. But I mean, again, I don't that's know. when you had that talk with your spouse mm-hmm. afterwards or whatever. Like, I don't know. I just kind of felt mm-hmm. like it was just weird mm-hmm. to me and cringe worthy to say the least, because it was just like, mm, if there was any other time to show your manhood and or beat your or, chest for your woman, right? That just wasn't the platform to do. So we sat back down talking about keep her name out your mouth. Seemed like a misdirected anger I can't, type of situation. I really <laughs> hope they do a red table talk. I would really love to know the backlash on that one. Like, well, what? if they do, I mean, backstory rather. I'll let you report back if they end oh, up. Oh yeah. Oh, doing it and you end up watching it. <laughs> anyway, ladies, I think we are to the end of this episode of our show. Oh, we did kind of end off with a little of a lighter note it, it, yeah it was not, because you know what at the end of the day when we all go right. our separate ways we don't care about will smith and jada pinkett bless right your family clearly bless <laughs> right exactly now, can i get a loan really care care but, but wait you know. i need a loan <laughs> now, i will take that though i'll take the loan Wow. Well, all right, ladies and sippers, this concludes this week's episode of the Sip and Unwind True Crime Podcast. So please, sippers, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Mm -hmm. Podbean, Mm -hmm. YouTube, TikTok. I forgot we got the little TikTok page popping or whatever. (laughs) We're trying. We're trying. Because our TikTok is popping a little bit. It's popping. You need to get on there and start posting some stuff. Get us some engagement. There's a lot of videos that you can actually get us a lot of views on. Okay. Okay. I'm just thinking of clapping how one that goes. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) Oh. I'm just saying. I mean, okay, Sippers, we hate to leave. No way. Sippers, we hate to leave. What does that have to do with true crime? I mean, you know. It no, matter where do people find us? No, find no. Us. Oh my God. Okay, Look, so we need we to open to up. <laughs> we need to open up an OnlyFans page if that's where you're trying to go. Oh, <laughs> talking about clapping and getting people to come over to the page we're gonna do only fans too uh sippers stay tuned oh. <laughs> i already got a video waiting to post oh my god that would be so crazy but it's been real ladies real fun all right bye, until next sippers. time bye ladies yeah. bye sippers. Bye, ladies bye Wait a minute, sippers. One more thing. We've got some bloopers from this week's episode. Stay tuned. Do y'all remember cassette tapes? Uh, McFly, hello. I'm sorry, I had to get to my mute. I was trying to get to it and it wasn't clicking on. Me too, man. Y'all, 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 y'all walked away. I know. Oh, no, we ain't finna like, do that. I can't get to it. You not okay, finna pack? Okay. You ain't finna pack on me, and you ain't finna take care of the baby while we recording tonight. I did. I promise. I need my engagement. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I can't hit mute. My damn mouse. Oh, girl. Is y'all just gonna step the way or went to sleep no, on me already? Did I hit pause? <laughs> I don't know oh, what the hell you hit. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> um, Sippers, I know this may be personal. Some people may not want to hear it, but my mm. favorite one is still Michael Jackson. I still have it. Michael Jackson bad. I'm not giving it up. Wow. Mine and on that note, Edward, uh, with, uh, Edward J. mixtapes. <laughs> that know that. Or Atlanta knows are that. probably not going to know who that they is. They are but not going to know that. You are in Atlanta, Georgia, Michael Georgia Jackson. you know about Edward J. and those slow okay. damn tapes that we had back in the day. Yes. Yeah, the kind, have, that's my the kind you had to put your pencil in and re, you know, <laughs> rewind and. 
pull the no. tape back in. Well, that's only if it broke. Like if yeah. it then came out. Yeah. I'm just saying, I do have cassettes. I got the old school okay. with some tape on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll confess real quick that I do still have some cassette tape somewhere in my closet. But I apologize to our sippers for that ghetto fabulous uh, commercial. <laughs> Goodness, but uh, girl, <laughs> hey, is but uh, playing with the big hey, dollars, but, we, but back, back, back to the okay. story. I love it. Y'all be going <laughs> look when everybody cuts y'all out, then y'all really come good back good and really do overkill. <laughs> it's like, yes, uh-huh. that's what I want. Keep it yes. going. <laughs> and I have several tapes, and <laughs> but I but still I got them, here. y'all. I'm not giving them up. My but I was sitting today. here like, hello. Girl, Hello? I thought I was hitting the record button. I said, am I hitting the record? Because one of them went to go pack and the other one probably kissing our little grandbaby. No, I couldn't get my mute. <laughs> but anyway, all right, let me see where my place is at. Y'all got oh, wait, there. you got to go back. He's sending out records or okay. cassettes. <laughs> okay. Well, I was waiting for you to say bye, Demetrius. <laughs> She oh, don't know what to do with that bye. You always got to say bye. <laughs> okay, okay, now. do the bye. Okay, bye, do the bye. <laughs> Until next time. Bye, bye. ladies. Bye, bye sippers. Bye, ladies. Bye. Ooh, she she didn't do it right. <laughs> she ever since, ever since <laughs> we asked her about the yeah, exactly. She didn't <laughs> change it up. Let it crescendo. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, that, you gotta show you how educated with a new word. No, I don't even know what that word means. <laughs>